All right. Well, I'm, uh, my name is Spencer Pettit, and I've been invited by Oil Life to come and speak to you today about the Belief Blueprint. Now, the Belief Blueprint didn't begin as a book. It actually began as an idea that was shared with me by my business partner, Elise Shedevy. And then uh, the concepts evolved into different ideas that I ended up expanding on and then eventually writing a book about. And uh, that book, The Belief Blueprint, is available at Oil Life. And uh, that's the reason that Oil Life today has asked me to uh, do this workshop. So uh, we have a couple of people on here live with us, and uh, the rest of you are uh, going to be watching this by recording. Uh, so I have a couple of computers in front of me. My personal computer decided that it needed to re reboot. <laughs> and so uh, I'm using a computer right now, and we'll do the first part of our workshop on this computer. And then I'm going to uh, actually. Um, do a screen share from the other computer as soon as that one is done rebooting. It's getting close here. So uh, I appreciate you being with us. And uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into our presentation. So uh, for those of you that are listening, this presentation is not specifically aimed at building an essential oil business, although that is a very appropriate place. And it's actually the place where I have used this the most and done the most training on it. Uh, how many of you here have been through the finding your why exercise that I developed. This is a very common uh, thing in the company now. It's this four-step process of how to find your core emotional motivator. Now, of course, that's a huge part of how we build belief. And uh, starting with our why is uh, the most crucial step. A lot of people don't understand that this is uh, a foundational piece. And when you ask somebody what their why is, they actually get a little bit uh, confused. They may end up talking about uh, some of the goals that they have, or they may end up talking about the things that matter to them in life, but it actually isn't the true, deep, motivating force in their life. So as we get started here today, it's important for us to start with why. And uh, this concept was actually based on the principles taught by Simon Sinek in his book, Start With Why. And uh, he made the great point that people don't care about what you do, they care about why you're doing it. In other words, you can tell somebody all day long about what you're trying to accomplish, but it's not until they actually feel the power of why you're doing it that it actually moves hearts to join your cause. So with all of that said, uh, I wanted to just explain a couple of things about finding your why. And uh, first, I'll just a little bit of background. So. Uh, specifically for me, this happened uh, a few years ago. It was actually about seven years ago. I was working with a member of my team who had been trying to move forward in their business for actually about three years at that point. And they had uh, had a little bit of success, but had reached some points of frustration. And as that frustration mounted, uh, she came to meet with me and she said, uh, you know, I, I would really like to um, succeed here, but I'm not, I, I'm not quite sure why it's not working. And so I think maybe after working with, with this individual for uh, over six months and kind of having these ups and downs, maybe I was a little bit frustrated too. And so I said, I said, well, why are you even here in the first place? Why are you sticking around? Uh, you know, what, what does this mean to you? And she gave me an answer and I sensed from the time that we had spent together and what we were trying to accomplish moving forward, that the answer she gave me wasn't the whole story. And so I said again, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but why is that uh, thing that you just said important to you? Why does that matter to you? And we repeated this process quite a few times. I didn't have any direction on it. I was just kind of following my, my instincts on it. And what ended up happening is that after asking that question several times, we got, we pulled away layer after layer of ideas. And finally, she was able to vocalize a feeling about what it was that she was doing. And with, with that feeling came emotion and came a sense of resolve. And she finally connected with her true why. And it turns out it had nothing to do with the initial things that she said, like helping people with oils or making money or other things like that. That actually wasn't her why. Her why at the core was something completely different. It was an emotional driver. And it was actually very difficult to define in language. And it wasn't until we pulled away all of these layers that we finally got down to the very core 
of it, which was simply a feeling that was based on past experiences and things that she had learned in her life that she really believed and really knew. And so that was the first, that was the first nut that I was trying to crack in this, in this uh, process was let's figure out where this core emotional driver is. Cause if we can start with that, then it gives us this incredible starting point uh, to help people and to get them to, uh, to get them to really identify what, what's motivating them. And we start to realize just how powerful our beliefs are. And all of a sudden, it started to frame up with this thing, like I mentioned before, this idea that was shared with me uh, by my business partner, talking about the process through which we build belief. And it was a very simple process. And I was looking at that, and I thought, you know, there's more going on here. And so as I started to dive into it, starting with why, I realized that there was a simple process that uh, that builds belief, uh, and we can outline it in five steps. And these five steps comprise what uh, is now called the belief blueprint, and uh, what we're here to talk about tonight. So this is really exciting to have all you guys here with the Y Foundation um, laid out. I'm actually going to take just a second here. Uh, my computer uh, that was rebooting has finally come back to life. And uh, I'm going to get my presentation pulled up here so you can finally see the slides. And if, uh, if you'll give me just a minute to do that, I apologize to those of you that are on the recording. You can skip ahead a little bit here. Those of you that are live, you can just look at me smile at you while I click on my computer here just for a second. Just give me one, one minute while uh, my five-year-old laptop here decides to boot up. You would think that... Uh, you know, for somebody who does presentations, we'd have computers that behaved better once in a while, but technology is really great until it's not. You're almost there. So right now, um, actually what I want you to do while we're, while we're going through this process of getting uh, my computer up to speed, I want you to think about all of the things in the past that you have thought maybe were motivating forces in your life. And, uh, those of you that are uh, watching the recording or that are on here live with me, I want you to make sure that you have um, a blank sheet of paper in front of you and a notebook um, because uh, you're going to take some notes, but I want you to keep one sheet of that blank as we, as we move into this because um, we're going to go through um, this why, this finding your why exercise very quickly together so you can get a feel for how it works. Um, and um, that's going to be the thing that I uh, demonstrate for you the most. Uh, and then we're going to uh, talk about how that why lines up with the rest of your belief system. And by the end of this, you're going to know actually how to take the things that have been holding you back to take the things that you want. And you're going to realize a very simple step-by-step -step process of how to start moving towards those and how to make them happen, how to shift what you believe. Are you guys ready for that? That's kind of an exciting part of being here. So that's my promise to you is by the end, you're going to be able to answer the question. How do I change my beliefs? How do I take control of this? Okay. Now, this is simpler than a $2,000 workshop, you know, uh, that you're going to go to with some big guru. This is simple, simpler than, you know, years of counseling that you may have been through to try to figure yourself out. I've had people say to me that this finding your why exercise is the single most powerful thing that they've actually been through to discover what it is that makes them them. To, makes them tick, makes them you know do what they do. So I'm I'm really actually excited to uh, bring this up to you and to mention um, all of these things. Uh, so let's see. Getting my computer here. Finally got the link. You're gonna see Spencer number two log in over here. All right, before we begin, what I want you to do is I, uh, I want you guys to draw out um, a T-chart, okay? Uh, a T-chart is simply a line across the top with a line down the center. I want you to let it go across your page, a line across your page, and then a line down the center. You're gonna write a category of things on both sides, okay? So uh, make a T-chart right now. And on the left-hand side, I want you to label the left-hand side we need to mute this here. There we go. Um, I want you to label on the left-hand side of the T-chart things that I hope for. 
things that I hope for. You're going to label that left side of the T-chart, things that I hope for. Here we go. Yay, we have slides. Thank you to technology for finally coming along. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to write down on the left-hand side, things that I hope for. And then on the right-hand side, you're gonna write things that I'm confident in, okay? So matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it in, um, we've uh, gotten through these slides already. Let, We'll get back to those. I want you to show you this T-chart because I already jumped ahead to that. Oh man, okay, hold on just a second. Here it is. So this is what your T-chart should look like right here. Things I hope for and things I'm confident in, okay? So those of you that are watching on here live right now, I want you to, on the right-hand side, right now, I want you to write down some of the things that you know you're good at. You just know it. Now, how do you know that this is something that you're good at? Well, this is, if anybody were to challenge you on this and say, you know, you're not really that good at sewing, or you're not really that good at cooking, or you're not really that good at running, or something like that, you would be like, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, make a list on this right-hand side of things you're confident in right now today. And if you can't think of anything, looks like most of you are upright and breathing. You probably brushed your teeth or your hair today. There's something in your life that you know you're confident in. There are things that you know how to do. So go ahead and write those down right now while I'm continuing to talk. And then the thing that I want you to do after you've made this list on the right hand side, Lost our sound there for a second. On our left-hand side, I want you to write down the things that you hope for, okay? So write down, you know, for example, uh, some people say, I wanna, I wanna lose some weight, or I would like to do, I'd like, like to accomplish something like climbing a mountain or running a marathon, or uh, I'd like to uh, get a thing, maybe it's a new home or a new car, or I wanna pay off debt, or I wanna bring a spouse home, or, um, maybe I'm just looking for, you know, the Kung Fu Panda inner peace. I'm looking for the peace uh, that is available to me. And that's all I want. I just want peace finally in my life. Whatever it is, the things that you hope for, write down some physical things, write down some, you know, ideas, uh, maybe things you'd like to accomplish, um, and maybe some attributes or uh, principles that you're chasing. Whatever it is, put them down on the left-hand side. Do you guys understand how this T-chart works now? I want you to have this T-chart to reference as we go through this. All right, now we're gonna go all the way back. We'll come back to that T-chart in a minute. We're gonna start back at the beginning. Okay, great. Now, before you guys get off thinking, well, Spencer, it's easy for you to say because you're already a uh, blue diamond in doTERRA and you've been doing this for years. Of course you're confident. Well, let me tell you a little story about when I started building my essential oil business and whether you're building an oil business or not this will uh, this will resonate with you so i was the i was the guy that started out at the beginning and i was interested in doing the business because i really wanted the time freedom i really wanted to do something that would free up my time so i could spend more time with my family uh i was coming from working you know 60 to 80 hour weeks building another company and i wanted to do something that would actually free my time up so First day on the job, my mentor said, you need to call and talk to people. And I, okay, I'm gonna call and talk to somebody. So I called up my good friend, somebody who I know wouldn't shoot me down. <laughs> and I called him up and I said, hey, I just made the decision to, to leave my steady day job and to jump into building a business sharing essential oils with people and educating people about essential oils. And he goes, oh, is it doTERRA? You guys got to know. This was a year and a half into 
uh, the company uh, being founded, people didn't know about doTERRA. So the fact that he knew about doTERRA it absolutely terrified me. I had all these negative beliefs about uh, multi-level marketing and I wasn't even sure uh, about how essential oils really worked. And I wasn't sure about, you know, how to sample to somebody or how to get them on board. I was a brand new, a brand new essential oil sharer. You know, I didn't know what to do. And he goes, oh yeah, my grandma gave me some of those. And I was like, oh great, grandma's giving out essential oils. I knew I was getting into an old lady business. This is terrible. And then he said, and then he said, they didn't really work for me. Thanks for calling, but I'm not interested. Oh, you know, stabbed to the heart, right? Like, I didn't know what to say. I just said, okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. We'll talk to you later. And um, it didn't go so well. I didn't have the confidence, right? I didn't have the belief. Well, let's fast forward eight years later. Here I am as a blue diamond in doTERRA. Do you guys think I figured out how to sample essential oils to people? Do you think I figured out how to talk to people? What happened? What changed? Well, the thing that changed is that I simply gained more experience. I simply gained more experience. I had to put in the hard work between that point and where I am now to gain the experience that finally brought the belief. Now, before you think that this sounds too simple, I'm gonna show you how we mix this stuff up and how we get this confused. Because now if I were to have the same conversation with my friend, it would go something like this. Hey, I just started sharing essential oils and I've left my job and I'm gonna do this full time now. And he would say, oh, is it doTERRA? And I'd go, yeah, great, you've heard of it, awesome. It's a phenomenal company. And then he goes, yeah, my grandma gave me some of those. And I'll go, oh, great. I work with a lot of people, grandmas, moms, dads, kids, people who act like kids, animals. Like I work with all sorts, anybody, right? And he would say, you know, they didn't really work for me. And I would say, oh, that's fine. Uh, either you, you didn't use enough, you didn't use it often enough, you didn't have the right oil, or your body's not made of cells like everything else on the planet. We're gonna figure this out, okay? That's confidence. I've seen them work so much, now I know. But how did it get from there, from point A to point B? This experience was enough to convince me that I needed, I needed to um, crack this nut. So all of the things that we put out there, it eventually evolved into this book where I was able to outline this process that I went through. And once you understand the process, you guys are gonna be able to control it. You're gonna be able to put it to work for you. It doesn't make it easier. It just means that you have a roadmap now. You have a blueprint of how to make it work. So that's what you're here for today after all of this long introduction and computer issues. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks. I'm not insulting your intelligence by, by doing this, but I am gonna start with a single dot, okay? <laughs> I just want you guys to know how simple this really is. Point A. Point A is where you are today. Everything that has happened in your life, all of the God-directed, higher power sourced, whatever you wanna call it, all of the things that have happened to bring you to who you are today. You've been through a lot. You've had a lot of stuff that's happened in your life. You have a lot of beliefs that you hold dear and a lot that you're just kinda of not sure about and you even have a lot that you aren't even aware that you believe until they're challenged. But it's who you are today. How many of you, you know, you, I guess uh, if you're watching the recording, you can't really do this, but how many of you aren't really satisfied with where you are today? You'd like to change it. Let's do something different. Let's, let's become, you know, let's, let's become somebody better. So there's a big difference between having goals and having things that you would like to accomplish and being unhappy with who you are right now. See, being unhappy with your point A right now, is, it's just as silly as if you were getting in your car to go on a trip, to drive to the airport, and you were upset and intimidated by the fact that there were people already there getting on planes. It's super silly. Their journey is not your journey. This is your journey. Your point A is starting in your driveway into your car, heading to the airport. All those people at the airport are going different places. You could say, yeah, but they're all flying on airplanes. 
Well, duh, it's a mode of transportation, just like your business is, okay? It's just a vehicle for you to do great things in the world. So you're starting at point A right now. This is who you are. Stop comparing yourself to all of these other people that are already on their journeys. They might be on a plane landing somewhere else. And you know what? Even the people that are on your flight, as soon as you get off, are going to go to a different place. All right? You might travel together with people for a period of time, but your journey is your own. So don't be ashamed of that. You can own this. Now, your goals, what you want to accomplish, these are the things that are out in the distance. That's where you want to go. Point B. Now, why do I get these things really clear? Why do I talk about this? Well, it's because you need to understand that your point A today, everything that you're made of right now, is your why. This is why you do what you do. Who you are right now, all of the experiences that have made you who you are, that's point A. And point B, out in the distance, that's simply what you're after. That's what you're trying to accomplish. It's the, the things in the distance that you think accomplishing that your heart tells you, if I acquire that thing, that that will help fulfill the needs that you're lacking. Now, why do I bring all of this up? Well, it's because a lot of people get their what's and their why's confused. And let me give you an example. How many of you have ever been in a presentation where somebody stands up and they start to cry on stage because they, they have a picture of their family up and they say, this is my why, this is my why. You know, and they point at their family and everybody gets really moved and everybody's very touched. Well, I'm not talking bad about that, but what they mean is the feelings my family gives me and the feelings I have about wanting to be a good parent or being a good mentor to my children or the love that I feel for my family, that's my why. It's not that their family is their why. If you're a mother, you understand that you can't pour from an empty cup. Your children aren't getting the best mom unless you've been up and had your morning coffee or your morning smoothie or your morning yoga routine or whatever it is that fills your cup. So your family can't possibly be your why. But that sense of peace, that feeling that you have, that is what motivates you. Now, a happy family and a healthy family, that's your what. That's what you're working toward. So let's get really clear because if you have ever felt like you've been just a little bit off, like if you think about a compass, if you're on a journey and you're just one degree off and you spend a lot of time going in that one direction and you're just one degree off of what your goals really are, you actually end up in a completely different county by the time you arrive, okay? If an airplane is one degree off in its flight plan, it ends up in a different country, okay? We have to be really clear about, about being accurate in that. Have you guys ever felt like this little guy? Have you ever felt like a hamster on a wheel or somebody on a stationary bike where you're pedaling and pedaling and pedaling and you just aren't seeming to make any progress? This is because you haven't actually had your why or your what completely figured out. It's imperative that you are pinning down your actual why and what you're after. So with all of that said, only after you have those two points pinned down are you going to be able to figure out the how. Because otherwise, you're just running around in circles. Only one of your ends pinned down, you're just going to be spinning all over the place trying to aim. You have to have these two dots. It's a mathematical fact. You have to have two dots in place in order to have direction. So until you are really clear on why you're doing what you're doing and what you're after to fulfill that why, the how is going to be a circus. It's going to be an absolute circus. Okay? So here's the thing that you need to write down in your notes. And this is what you're going to get out of the book in great detail. But this is what you want to know right now. Your why is not a thing. Your why is a feeling. If I could teach the world this one thing, this is one of the main reasons that I have decided to write the belief blueprint is because I want people to understand to stop chasing things and to start being fueled with purpose and passion and the feeling that drives you. That's more powerful and resonates with people more than anything else out there. So for the sake of time, because this is only a one hour workshop, 
I'm going to walk you through these steps long enough for you to write these down and then you can do the exercise on your own um, after we're done together here today when you have the full picture and everything lined up. Now just so you know the finding your why exercise or finding your fire is outlined in the belief blueprint book and it's available to you as you go through and it explains everything in great detail but I am going to lay this out for you so you can understand how this works. You see the brain is a complicated thing. It's like Shrek said, he was right. If you ever saw Shrek and he talked about how, how you know, the brain is basically onion. We've got all these layers that we want to work down through. The golden circle defined by Simon Sinek in his book, Start With Why, it breaks the brain into these three sections. The neocortex, the midbrain, and the limbic brain. Now, I don't expect you to memorize all of this. But I just want you to know that they interact with different parts of your journey. And so in order to get to the why, we have to peel away these outside layers of neocortex logical thought, all the abstract things that midbrain can do, and we have to get to the feelings that operate our limbic system. So question one, this is aimed at people who are building a doTERRA business, but whether you're doing a doTERRA business or not, this is going to apply to you because you can simply say, why am I doing X? Why am I? Why am I wanting to be president of the PTA? Why am I wanting to be a stay at home mom? Why am I working 60 hours a week right now? It doesn't matter where you start, just put down the vehicle that you're currently trying to move your life forward on, the, the thing that's most important to you, or the activity that you're trying to pursue, and just start with that question. Why are you doing that? And you're gonna answer that question with, because I. So an example would be, why am I doing doTERRA as a business? because I want to create a community of people who support each other in their journey to find better health with essential oils. Wow, that's beautiful, isn't it? I kind of want to I kind of want to go back to the recording and like put that on a bumper sticker or a t-shirt. <laughs> now you're going to you're going to laugh because I actually call that first statement that we come up with our bumper sticker why. It's it's the thing that's publicly acceptable. It's the thing that we're willing to say to family and friends when they're asking us you know, why are you even doing this? We're like, well, I want to create a movement of people that are doing beautiful things in the world. And, you know, we're going to make some money and, and, you know, change the world together with, you know, one drop at a time. That's beautiful stuff. Unfortunately, you guys, this is where most individuals and most companies stop. It's just the first layer. You're only one layer into this thing. And we're already putting that up on our wall and saying, I'm going to change the world one drop at a time. Well, that doesn't mean anything to you unless you understand why that matters to you so much. Because there's a lot of people in the world who that doesn't matter to, right? They don't care. <laughs> they, they don't want to change the world one drop at a time. They don't even know drops of what, right? So what we want to do is we want to dig in another layer here. The way that we do this is we look at what we wrote down for our answer in number one. And you ask, why is this important to me? Why does this matter to me? And you're going to write out why is what we wrote down in number one important? So for example, I said, I want to change the world with the power of essential oils. Well, why is that important to me? And so what we're going to write down here is you can start this one out with because I think. And this little writing prompt here actually leverages the cognitive response in your brain. You're now having to justify what you said in number one. This is where we open the door to the rest of your brain. This is where we start working down layers. We start mining your beautiful your beautiful limbic data that's hiding at the core of your being here. Now, because I think, I'm gonna go ahead and start an example answer here. Well, I wrote, I want to change the world with the power of essential oils. Why is that important to me? Well, because I think that synthetic medications are, are harming a lot of people and there's a lot of addiction and pain in the world. And I think that there's a better way and I wanna share that with people. Okay, beautiful. Well. What you end up with then in number two is we've now opened the door into your belief system. So what you wrote down in number two was really great, but it was just a justification. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Now we're to question three of four here. So question three is you're going to simply look at what you wrote in number two. And you're going to ask the question, well, why is this important to me? So here's an example of how that would go. And your writing prompt is because I believe, and it's extremely important in this instance that you remember to say, because I believe. Now, what I just said about 
synthetic medications and there being a better way. That was what I thought. That was my justification. So now I'm going to say, well, it's important to me because I believe that people can get stuck and that it can really harm individuals when they're stuck on medications and when they're, you know, medicating side effects and they're really just kind of spinning in circles. And I believe that people shouldn't have to live that way. And I, and I believe that uh, God has given us these natural things on the earth that help us to help our bodies to balance, heal and repair themselves. Okay. We're starting to get somewhere, right? Like you're starting to feel that there's power in that number three answer. It's because we've accessed a belief system. You guys, when Martin Luther King was speaking about his, his ideas, he didn't say I have a plan or I have, or I have this idea. What he got up is he said what he believed and those beliefs resonate with other people. If you want to have influence with other people, we need to start from a point of what we actually believe. Now, all of you watching this understand this presentation is it's called the belief blueprint workshop, right? So I'm not just going to stop at number three. We need to understand where did these beliefs come from? And I'm going to give you a very simple approach to how to do this. Once we've stated that belief about the power of essential oils versus, you know, how much I really feel that those things are harming. Well, now question number four says, review what you wrote down in number three. And we're going to simply ask this, how did you come to know this? How did you come to believe what you just wrote down in number three? This is pretty powerful stuff. Now, before you answer this, you have to really be honest with yourself. A lot of people start to feel kind of selfish at this point because they don't want this to sound any less pretty than the rest of their answers. And you need to know your why, how you came to know this. It has nothing to do with anybody else. You're not digging into your why because of your kids or your husband or your wife or you know, your business partner or whatever it is, you're digging into this because of you. This is all about you. Okay. Somebody else's why somebody else's stuff at the very core of our limbic experience is uh, not enough to get us moving. It's not enough to get us moving as righteous as you are, as wonderful as you are, as self-sacrificing as you've been in your life. Your deepest motivating factor is right here in this area. So you look at what you wrote down in number three, you let down those guards and you focus inward just for a moment here. How did I come to know this? And it's going to be something along these lines. Just as an example, because I know what it feels like to watch a family member suffer through addiction to synthetic medications and to be on up to 12 medications at one time and to suffer through illness after illness and and to be constantly seeking answers i know the pain of watching a family member suffer and i don't want anybody else to have to go through with that and so i am going to uh, use this vehicle so that other people never have to experience that pain now that's not my personal why i'm sharing it with you as an example so that you understand you guys that sounds nothing like where we started at the beginning, right? Why am I doing doTERRA as a business? Oh, to have a community of people that come together to support and, and help each other with oils. That's a really cool bumper sticker. That's a really cool t-shirt. Can you imagine if you walked around with a t-shirt that said, I share essential oils because I know the pain of watching a family member suffer with synthetic medical addiction. I mean, like you could really, you could really like have a depressing t-shirt on. Nobody wants to wear that on their sleeve. However, in the right interaction with somebody at the right time you know what's pushing you now and you now know how to connect with somebody you guys we are incredible animals at the center of our beings we dig down and we'll find that fire so i want to challenge you as you have access to the recording to go through and pause and take time to write these things out and explore and if you want more prompts and more ideas um, i have a, a youtube video that's up you can just look up Spencer Pettit and Finding Your Fire. You can go through it there. I facilitate it there and encourage you to pause. You can go through this exercise as many times as you want until you feel like you found it. It's also outlined in the book. Now, why do I put this out there so much? Why do I you know, put the Finding Your Why exercise out for free, all these four steps and all these details about how to do it? You guys, it's because, it's because of what you can do with it. I want to see people taking this and changing the world with it. Here's, 
here's what happens. Now that you have your why pinned down and you know what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish, now we can finally go after the how. We can finally start talking about the steps that you're gonna take to reach for your goals. Now let's go back to the T-chart that we started with. How many of you were good students and listened to this whole recording and wrote down your T-chart? Okay, awesome. Now, right there on the right-hand side, you filled in the things that you're confident in, right? Some of the things that you're confident in, it might be playing a musical instrument, some physical activity. On the left-hand side, you're gonna write down the things that you hope for. Might be world peace. It'd be nice if some of our world leaders had that as things they hoped for. There's, there are lots and lots of things that we hope for, but we just sit around hoping for stuff all the time. I'm going to tell you this. If you're looking for growth, and this is, again, a very doTERRA-specific model right here, but I want you to understand that your belief in product, your belief in the company, your belief in the business, your belief in yourself and your leaders, and your belief actually in the bigger picture of why you're doing this, as you're beginning to reach people and eventually in your own influence, those are the things that are standing between you and growth in your business. If you wanna see your business grow, it's because you need to be growing your belief in these areas. Your rank actually directly corresponds with your belief in these areas. Now, don't get upset with me for moving that forward. There's a beautiful document that's even more fleshed out than this. It's called the Belief Summit. And it's available if you just go Google doTERRA belief summit and it's this beautiful graphic of a mountain and it has every rank as you're climbing up this summit and what you need to become as you go along. Hopefully right here on your screen, you can see this. It says your business will grow as much as you do. This simply means that if you're looking for growth in whatever your endeavor is, whatever it is that you're pursuing, it's going to grow as much as you are willing to grow. But I promise you this, if you're not willing to grow and change and to gain new experiences, it's not going to happen. The human brain is an amazing thing. The human brain is an amazing thing. And I want you to know that your limbic brain actually has one job. Anybody want to venture to guess what that one job is? Your limbic system, the thing that runs your heart rate, the dilation of your pupils, the, the sweaty palms, okay? <laughs> your rapid pace of breathing. All of those things are regulated by your limbic brain. It has one job. It's pure instinct. Its job is to keep you alive. Now, I've referred to this in the book and, and in my presentations as a lion, because a lion is this massive, powerful, fierce representation of pure instinct. So have you ever, have you ever felt like there's something inside of you that's just screaming to get out and to do something in the world? It's just, there's just something powerful that needs to be accomplished and your heart is just reaching for it. That is your why at the core of your limbic brain, at the core of your soul, as far as I'm concerned, roaring like a lion. It needs to be let out. These instincts, this desire to progress and to grow is changing. Do you guys know how a lion tamer show works? Do you know how it works when lion tamers are interacting with the animals? They have agreements with the lions. It's not necessarily that they're in control of the lions. As a matter of fact, the lions know that they're still in control. Just like your limbic brain knows it's in control of everything that happens in your life. Anytime you've ever made a decision based on a gut feeling or based on how you're feeling, the story I like to share about this is the illogical decision that my wife made when she decided to marry me. <laughs> she knew this young, crazy college kid who came to her and said, I really like you, I think we should get married. She had no reason to bet on me. As a matter of fact, when I asked her later, a few years later, why she decided to marry me, it was a fun, it was a fun uh, conversation, uh, just a, a lighthearted conversation. She said, you know, why did you decide to marry me? She goes, well, you had potential. <laughs> now, with that sort of a statement, what that means is there wasn't really a massive logical reason why she would take a chance on this young guy who, wasn't really doing anything with his life yet, didn't have a lot going for him, but yet was in love. She went on a feeling is what she did. So if you ever fall out of agreement with that feeling though, then you're in trouble. You guys, there are people in the world who can't differentiate between standing on the edge of a cliff or standing in front of a group of people to deliver a message. The limbic brain doesn't differentiate between the pain. It's simply saying, 
this is not good. This is not good for us. So what you do is you learn to work with, with those instincts. So you guys ready to find out in this last about 18 minutes that we have together here about how the belief blueprint lines up now that we have all of this foundation, we've got your why in place, you've got all of these things going for you. Let's go ahead and talk about this. You're going to notice that this line that goes across the top of our simple machine here looks a lot like looks a lot like what we started out talking about with your why, your what, and your how. So we start out at the very beginning with hope. Have you guys ever been to a, a playground like this or did you grow up maybe with this as your school playground? I did. I had, I had seesaws like this. When you go to sit down on that seesaw, you might have a friend on the other side. What happens as soon as they jump off and it's just you on the seesaw? <laughs> it's a crash to the bottom, right? So what we're, really, what we're really talking about here is when you go sit down on this simple lever and you bring all of your weight of experience, everything that you bring to the table, you're sitting down there at the bottom with your why, this deep, this deep unmet need that you're going for. And now that goal that you have, that, that um, you know, the what that you're after is off in the distance. And now it's even up in the air. It's an uphill climb to get there. You're sitting on the ground. Well, how do levers work? We have to start moving forward and in some way, we're gonna to have to leverage this hope that we're starting with into something else. Your why has to be stronger than why not? Your why has to be stronger than, oh, why not give this a shot? I'll, I'll, give, I'll try this out, let's see how this goes. It's gotta be stronger than that because otherwise you're never gonna move. It's an uphill climb to work towards those goals. But once you finally decide to move off of your little hope dot and start moving forward, if you can't find, if you can't find any hope, if you can't find even the slightest, tiniest bit, you need to go talk to some friends, go have some experiences with the oils, um, go listen to some testimonials, do something because you can spark that hope and whatever it does, it will lead you to take action. This is the next step here. And it's put on an arrow here because taking action is the key between your hopes and your dreams. You absolutely have to take action. I have a lot of people who say, gosh, you know, life just isn't going my way. And I say, well, what have you done about it lately? It's a very simple question, but a lot of people just aren't taking action. Once you take action, it leads you to this very simple but crucial center of the belief blueprint, which is experience. Once you start to gain experiences, this is the, the, uh, the do or die point, okay? This is the, the time when we're either going to make it or break it. And it has to do with how much experience you're willing to gain. Because if you come in with a lot of doubt and negative belief, well, you're going to weigh down these scales. The scales of experience are not going to tip until you've put in enough time and gained enough positive experiences to tip this in your favor. It's simply not going to work out. And if you brought a lot of negative ideas, like I talked about at the beginning with my personal beliefs about network marketing or the things I didn't understand about the oils or who I was working with or how, how to uh, sample or make recommendations. If you don't have a lot of positive belief, it's going to be a little bit of time. This is where most people give up. This is where most people stop working is because they're simply not willing to put in the time to gain the positive experiences that they need. But let me tell you something, humans are amazing creatures. We actually are really good at forgetting negative things as long as, the, as long as we begin to have positive experiences. It's why when you run into, in the heat of raising your children, you have a screaming toddler in a shopping cart and you're at the grocery store and this grandma comes up to you and says, enjoy it while it lasts, it's so precious. And you go, what are you talking about? My kid is screaming their head off in public. This is miserable. And grandma says, it's, the, it's a beautiful time of life. And you're like, all you remember is the good stuff, grandma. All you remember is the good stuff. That's because after time has passed, humans only were really good at remembering good things as long as we're still alive and things worked out. Our limbic brain says, hey, guess what? I kept you alive. Everything is still good. So over time, you gained the experience and it eventually begins to tip this thing in your favor. You guys, this is what we're fighting for. 
You're trying to tip these scales. This is where you take control. You make the decision day in and day out to gain the experience that tips your scale forward here. Well, now you're into an area where we've got this momentum right here. What a beautiful thing. Momentum is the most beautiful experience that you can have in any process. This is where things start to get easier. It doesn't, as, as Leonardo da Vinci said, it's not that the thing got easier, it's that your ability to do it has improved, has increased, okay? It's like a flywheel in a steamship or in a, or in a steam engine. It took a lot of energy and a lot of time to get that thing spinning, but after a while, after all that work, you finally got it spinning and it became easier for you. Now, what does momentum lead to? Momentum is going to drop you down right here into your end goal, which is confidence. Now, all of you perfectionists are sitting here going, Spence, I'm sitting here listening to you and I realize right there at the top of the screen, it says a belief blueprint, but yet the end of this diagram here is confidence. I don't get it. <laughs> and it's because this is a very crucial point that I have to drive home to you. You guys are not after the thing at the end of your road. It's not enough for our limbic brains to get the house or to bring the spouse home or to have a happy family because all of it could change tomorrow. Your brain is smart enough to know just because you had a meal today doesn't mean you're not going to be hungry tomorrow. So what you're really after, I'm going to go back to the diagram here real quick. What you're really after is not the thing itself. Your what actually isn't a thing either. It turns out that your what that you're after is a feeling. It's a feeling of confidence. So you begin with this why that moves you forward, this, this feeling that drives you in everything that you do. And after all the experiences that you gained, you're training yourself to have this confidence. It's not the confidence that you got it once. It's the confidence that you can create it again and again. Because it's not enough for your brain that you got the house once or that you got one check or that you got one meal. It's that I can create this over and over again. So that's why your belief, your aggregate belief, the whole picture of who you are and what you believe, it's equal, it's equal to the sum of your experiences. So if you want more belief, what's the, what's the answer? Get more experiences. You want more belief, get more experiences. You want to see your confidence in that area grow. You want to become better at that one thing, get more experience. Okay, we're into the section on takeaways. Now, these, there is an entire chapter in the book with these takeaways. I'll do my best to do it a little bit of justice here so you can get the cliff notes. But what I want you to understand is that a lot of people don't understand this process that we've just gone through. The belief blueprint as it's laid out, remember how I started at the beginning? People confuse their what's and their why's and they think that it's things and not feelings. And we're just really confused about how all of this works. And so then when it comes to coaching ourselves and coaching people, we start to do stupid things like compare. You remember how I talked about at the beginning how uh, where you're starting right now, if you're upset with how things are going for you right now today, it's just as silly as being upset that somebody else is at the airport when you're getting in your car to go on a trip. Comparison will steal your joy right away because how in the world can you expect confidence in something if you're still working on the experience? How can you possibly expect your team member or your child or your spouse to confidently show up in the thing that you want them to do if they're still in the process of gaining the experience that will earn the confidence over time? Let's stop comparing and stop stealing all that joy in this journey. Instead, let's be grateful that we're still alive and we have the ability to guide this, this experience, to guide this journey by gaining experiences in the things that we want to be confident in. It might take some time, but we got time to give. In five years, whether you reach your goals or not, time will still pass. So don't let that comparison steal your joy in the journey. Now, I have, to, I have to make a comment here on the tortoise and the hare. I talk about this a lot in the book, but I want to drive it home to you guys here on this workshop right now. The difference between the tortoise and the hare is a little different than what Western society has brought up. 
what's the lesson that we get from the tortoise and the hare? What do we take away? Western society has this saying, slow and steady wins the race, right? We love to talk about this. It's like, it's like a, such a favorite thing for Westerners to say, slow and steady wins the race, slow and steady. You guys, it's actually totally inaccurate to say slow and steady wins the race. You see, the tortoise was slow. He couldn't help it. He was actually at the top of his game that day that he beat the hare. He was plugging along. It was absolutely, it was absolutely the biggest challenge of his life. Okay. I like to think that the tortoise had to take two weeks to recover after <laughs> the race, right? It took everything he had. Uh, really quickly, somebody just asked in the chat here, how did I get the book? I'm going to give you a link and actually I have a special deal for you at the end, a special discount code um, for everybody who uh, is part of this workshop today. So uh, if you hang tight, I have something for you at the end. Um, I hope that helps. But uh, the thing with the tortoise and the hare uh, is that the thing with the tortoise and the hare is that uh, a lot of people, if you ever have a team member come to you or a child or somebody and say, I'm just going to go slow and steady now. You guys, I'm telling you right now, call them out right there because slow and steady is an excuse to go not at all. <laughs> all right. Slow and steady does not work. Let me tell you why the tortoise won and the hare didn't. The tortoise won simply because steady wins. It's not because the hare didn't have the ability. The hare could have been done right away. He was so much faster. My business partner that brought me into the company, she is, she's a hare. She is so fast. She is incredibly quick. She was the fastest person to, to build to a diamond rank in, in doTERRA when she built. And it was astonishing to watch her work. She's a hare. She went extremely quickly. Others that we're working with, they're more tortoises. But I'll tell you this, everybody can make it through you can get what it is that you're after in life, whether it's to move your business forward or whether it's to work towards those things that you wrote down and things that you hope for. We can all get there if we steadily chip away at it. Don't subscribe to the lie that somehow you have to go slowly in order to be careful. Go at the edge of your abilities, but be steady, be consistent, be the tortoise, okay? That's the idea here. Take the lesson from the tortoise that you just keep putting one step in front of the other, even if it's a small step per day, you're still moving forward. A lot of people decide that they're just gonna take a break. Well, that's acting like the hair. You're gonna lose if you, take, if you take breaks like that in what you're working toward. I'm gonna tell you one more story here in our closing, in our closing uh, five minutes. Um, I have time to do this uh, story and also to um, uh, give you a couple more little takeaways. So uh, this isn't a picture of my son, but it looks a lot like he did when this experience happened. I was. Uh, when you start working from home like I did, uh, as I started building my doTERRA business up, I started doing a lot more laundry, obviously, because I was home. And so uh, one day my son walked in. He was about uh, three years old at the time, and he saw that I was folding socks, and he was absolutely fascinated by what, I, by what I was doing, folding socks. And he said, can I try? Oh, my gosh, you guys, if you're in a hurry to fold socks, don't try to teach a three-year-old how to fold socks if, if you're trying to get it done, right? <laughs> Well, I thought, okay, I'm going to be a good dad. I'm going to, I'm going to try to be helpful. So I handed him a pair of socks. And while I finished all of the rest of them, he was still kind of fumbling with these little socks, trying to figure out how to get them to fold into each other. Well, at the end of it, I was still in a hurry and needed to get stuff done. And I said, hey, thanks for trying, buddy. And I folded the sock that he was holding and put them away. And I didn't think anything of it until a couple years later, and he still told me that he didn't know how to fold socks. And I thought about, gosh, didn't somewhere along the line here, didn't I teach this five-year-old how to fold his own socks? It's so simple. And by the time he was five, he was able to do it just fine. So what lesson did I learn? I learned that if I want to lead others, including my own children, that I have to create experiences that are actually going to build belief. I actually have to Stop robbing them of the experiences that will build their own confidence. How many times in leading others have you watched them struggle through something like in doTERRA, for example, it would be struggling through watching somebody teach a, their first class or struggling through watching somebody, uh, you know, sh awkwardly share that sample with someone. You've given them the script, you've given them the instructions and you're watching them suffering. You're like, you know, I'll just do it for you. 
because I need that check. I need that rank. I need that progression. So I'm going to just get in and do it. And then you're frustrated that they don't have the confidence to do it themselves. <laughs> How is that fair? <laughs> so the lesson here is stop taking the experiences that build belief. Instead, as a leader in business or in life, find what the next step is for somebody and invite them into that thing. Invite them to do the very next thing. So if somebody's starting out a doTERRA business and they're terrified of sampling, teach them how to sample. If they're terrified of teaching a class, help them teach it and then sit back and shut up while they do it. Let them stumble a little bit. Let them fold those socks wrong and stop stealing socks. Okay? Don't steal the socks from people. Stop expecting them to grow if you're taking the very experiences that they need. Now, these last two are excuses for me to put a kitten in here, but it's simply this. Good things come to those who work. Don't let Western society teach you that you put enough things in motion, you're just going to wait for it to shake out. The belief blueprint demands that you keep climbing uphill. Do you remember? You have to keep climbing uphill to gain that experience. If you don't, that uphill climb is going to slide you right back down to where you started. You have to consistently work. Yes, it's an uphill climb. Yes, you're going to consistently be the tortoise, but you have to work at it, okay? It's okay. These things, these things come over time. It will work out. And here's the most beautiful part of how all of this comes together. All of you mothers are freaking out about this picture. It's just a stock photo I found on Google. I know it's super dangerous, but here's the idea. When you decide to take the leap into something else, you are able to take the confidence that you earned in everything else you did before and bring it with you. Once you've earned the confidence, it's yours to keep. Confidence is uh, confidence added together is your aggregate belief. And that is fully transferable. That's how you see these incredible people come in and get started building businesses and they go a lot faster. Or they get into something else. Like for example, uh, you might know somebody who's a great musician. They're a great uh, pianist and they pick up a guitar and they start plunking away at a song. How'd they do that? They moved a lot faster. Well, it's because their confidence in that other thing transferred to the new thing. So what does this mean to you? I'm now going to show you exactly it's going to seem so simple now that you understand it. Exactly how the things you wrote down that you hope for will now turn into things that you can be confident in. It's as simple as a blue arrow. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to put the belief blueprint to work now. You're going to, you're going to figure out exactly what you worked on, or sorry, what you're hoping for and what the next steps are, and you're going to start that uphill climb and gain the experiences. Okay? This is how you do it. So as you have the things that you're hoping for off in the distance there, you now, after doing the why exercise, know why you're doing it. You've got these two points pinned down. Now you can make a very simple plan. What are the next steps? And then you're going to just hack away at it. Day in and day out, you're going to move forward. And eventually, just like me in my business, starting out scared and unsure of what to say to my friend, after eight years of doing this, my confidence in the product and in the business and in so many other aspects of life is now unshakable because of the experiences that we earned by sweating it out day in and day out. This is the way that it works in every industry. Now, somebody just asked if you're going to be able to watch the recording of this. Yes, the recording is available to you. Uh, Oil Life, for everybody who registered for this webinar, uh, they're going to be sending you a link to the recording. So I've been speaking to the people who are watching this on the recording throughout. As a matter of fact, those of you who have been with me today, I hope you go back through the recording and do the why exercise or go find my YouTube video on finding your fire. Spencer Pettit, finding your fire on YouTube. Uh, you can go through that. But uh, for all of you that spent $5 on registering for this, uh, for this uh, webinar, we're going to credit that towards your book. So if you want to get the Belief Blueprint book and have a really in-depth approach and lots of explanation, the first two chapters are about how the brain works. You can understand about how, how all of this lines up. And then there's the why exercise in there. And then it goes into each individual section about the importance of taking action and gaining experience and reaching momentum. It's going to outline all of it for you so you can perfectly understand this. You guys, I've had people come to me and tell me that this was the single biggest linchpin in releasing their success, helping people get to diamond, helping people move forward. This has been a crucial stepping stone for so many people. And I'm so happy that Oil Life offers this book. 
and uh, that you guys were able to uh, join me here tonight. So uh, simply use promo code blueprint5 at checkout on oillife.com and you'll get your $5 that you put into this webinar uh, credited to you on there. So it knocks it down to $14.95. And uh, obviously while you're on there, you can pick up some other great items from Oil Life. My wife and I rely heavily on the Essential Life books and on the uh, roller bottles and other materials that we get from uh, Oil Life. So grateful to be partnered with them. Um, if you guys are interested in additional information from me or uh, if you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Finding Your Why coaching session, you can actually email me directly. I actually schedule those one-on-one -on -one and I do, I do those to walk you through one-on-one. -on -one. I actually give you a guarantee that uh, if you do a one-on-one -on -one Finding Your Why session with me, I've done hundreds of these through the years and um, I have yet to do one with somebody where we don't come away with finding their why. It's a, it's a pretty bulletproof process as we go through this. You will come away with something, but it's not free because I do uh, schedule my time around this and I am still building a doTERRA business and have other things. So uh, for those of you that are interested in doing that, you can message me and find out the cost and the scheduling and how that works. It's about a one to two hour exercise that I do with you one-on-one. -on -one. But with that said, most people uh, are happy with what they find in the book or in the videos or things like that as they go through the Finding Your Why exercise. If you want some additional help though, you can reach out and I'm, happy to help you through those. So with all that said, thank you guys for being with me today. This has been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. I am uh, thrilled to be able to um, thrilled to be able to help you through this and to share this incredible information with you. This has changed my life and the way that I do my business, the way that I interact with the world. It has helped me explain so many things like faith and belief and confidence and all the things that matter the most to me in life. And I hope it will do the same for you. I hope that you'll find the book as helpful as uh, has been for me in writing it. And uh, thanks for joining me today. And uh, we'll be in touch. Have a great evening, everybody.